So 2015 was the worst year of my life. And that's saying a lot because I've had so many difficult days since then. At that time, I had just finished a master's program that was supposed to open up opportunities for me, but try as I might, I could not get a job. I've always been an overachiever of sorts, so struggling to find direction and make any meaningful progress in my career was a hard hit. I even got let go from two different part-time gigs because they didn't think my work was up to par. Needless to say, I felt like I was failing in life. If you've ever been in a place where you feel stuck or left behind in life, this episode of the podcast is for you. Let's get into it. Hi there, my name is Remy Roy and I am the host of the Driven Introvert podcast and I'm so happy to be back with another season of the podcast and I'm doing something new with the videos this time. I am in a season of my life where I'm doing a lot of reflecting and it's really encouraging to think through the really hard things the Lord has brought me through. And I want to offer some encouragement to you should you find yourself in a difficult place right now. Have you ever been in a place where one area of your life is not going according to plan and because of that it makes you question everything else you catastrophize and blow everything else out of proportion because surely if you've not been able to get a job it means there's got to be something wrong with you on a deeper level right it's not silly when you think about these things when you zoom out on the wild thoughts that we have but in the middle of a tough season you start to believe them and in believing them i think we commit the most unfortunate error in this precarious situation is we ignore what's actually working. We forget the small and big victories and we cease to be thankful for what we do have while we're waiting for things to shake out. 2015 was the absolute worst for me. I couldn't get a job. And when I finally got them, I couldn't keep them. I kept trying things that didn't work. E-commerce business, blogging, publishing books. I was depressed. I was lonely and frustrated. Many days, I wondered why I was even trying so hard if nothing was ever going to work. That's how I felt. Those were very hard days for me. The few friends I had at that time would be at work during the day and too busy and tired to hang out in the evenings. Many nights, I cried myself to sleep. I prayed during the season. I prayed a lot, but mostly those were prayers of frustration and they weren't really rooted in complete faith and trust in God. I've spent a lot of time reflecting on this season of my life because I never want to feel that way again. I never want to feel out of control, borderline depressed, lonely, and forgotten. If I ever encounter such a similar turn of events in my life, I want to be in a much healthier place to handle the disappointment. Notice I didn't say I never want to experience those things again, even though I really don't. But life happens sometimes, right? But the main issue for me wasn't that life happened. The issue was my thoughts and how I approached this season of my life. The negative, spiraling, woe is me thoughts. I've also reflected on this season of my life because I know that's one of the ways to find answers and learn from that experience. And what have I learned? Well, that's the crux of what I want to share in this video today. What do you do when you feel stuck or left behind in life? For me, there are two major steps I think are, I think are truly crucial here. Number one, you need to reframe your perspective. That's what I had to do. What do I mean by that though? Perspective is how you see things, right? And it's usually colored by either your past experiences or your beliefs. If your experiences in life or in the past have been difficult and things haven't worked out the way you expected, and we'll talk about expectation in a minute because I believe it's a double-edged sword. So if things haven't worked out the way you expected, it's very easy to catastrophize and be negative in the way you assess your life. That's when we say things like, I'm stuck or I feel stuck or everyone's moving up and on, but I feel left behind, right? Or I feel like people around me are succeeding at work, even online, and they're not struggling, but I am struggling. You see the glasses half empty, maybe even completely empty on some days. I think it's draining to leave this way. I was there, I felt that, and it's not a good place to be. Your beliefs also significantly impact your perspective. If you believe that things should work out on the first try, you're going to be disappointed when they don't. If you believe that things happen to others that can never happen to you, you're going to be disillusioned when you go through the hard stuff. It's just the way it is. So how do you reframe your perspective? I think you do that by separating the assessment of your current situation from your past experiences, whatever those might be, good or bad. And you also deeply examine your beliefs. For me, here's how I did that. In 2015, I lost two part-time gigs, right? And I was back to being unemployed, right? I could have wallowed in that season. Well, I did wallow a bit, but then I got back up. I knew that God could not have brought me this far 
to leave me with no help, no prospect, and no future. Like there had to be something he had going on behind the scenes, right? Here's where you acknowledge and you deeply believe that God is the author of your life. That every decision you make should be filtered through his word and every experience he allows in your life is for your good and for his glory. You've got to believe this with every fiber of your being. If you don't believe this, it might be because maybe you haven't really surrendered your life to the Lord, which is fine if you're not there yet. But I hope you consider learning more about what that means and how to understand the sacrifice that God made for you by sending Jesus to give his life for you and me. So either that, you haven't met Jesus, or you're a Christian who has accepted Christ as your Savior, but you haven't yet made him the Lord of your life. And those are two different things. A discussion for another time. So for me, I reframed my perspective by going back to what I already knew about God so that I could accept that my past experiences, my sad, difficult experiences did not have to dictate my future. And what do I know about God? Well, I know that he's a good father. Matthew 7 verses 9 to 11. It says, which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, Though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? How much more? Number two, he has great plans for me. Jeremiah 29, 11, we all know this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. I know that the Lord said this to his people way back then who were in exile, but I know enough of God to know that this is his heart for all his children. The next one, nothing can separate me from his love. Romans 8 verses 31 and 35. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Guys, this is what I stand on and believe. Every experience in my life is filtered through these words. That gives me hope. The second way I learned to reframe my perspective was to examine my beliefs. One underlining belief I had to one underlining belief I had to dissect was the sense that my expectation in any situation is closely tied to the outcome of that situation. What do I mean by that? When I wrote my first book, I was so excited to release it, which is expected obviously. It was my first book. But there was a curious kind of hyper positive expectation that I I didn't think I should have had because it didn't serve me well at all. If you're a creative person putting out any kind of work into the world, this will probably resonate with you. I'd be working on my book for months. I was writing after work, editing on weekends, crafting characters, deleting, rewriting, all the things. Then finally, I was ready to release my book and in my mind, the world was waiting. Like surely people were going to be so impressed that I had written a book all by myself, right? They would be excited to get to know my characters, and be immersed in their world. And as soon as I dropped the news that the book was available, they would buy the book. They would buy paperback copies, Kindle versions, all the things. My expectations were so high, so incredibly and unreasonably high, that the letdown was massive. I was like, I felt like, you know, if you hurl like a a glass vase from the 20th floor of a building or something, my expectations were shattered a million pieces. And I know that that's been a little dramatic, but you get the point. I launched my book to cricket. It was so disappointing. What happens when we tie our expectations to a particular specific outcome? We say, oh, I want 100 sales of my first product in 24 hours, or 1,000 downloads of my podcast in one week, or an offer letter on this particular job with these particular sets of benefits and nothing else would do. More often than not, the results are disappointing, and we have to pick up our shattered expectations and sometimes our ego and pride off the floor. Hopefully, in those moments, I hope we're not looking for our faith in that pile of broken pieces. So, I say all this to say, after those less than exciting book launches, and yes, there have been quite a few, I felt left behind in life. I felt like I was stuck in a cycle of near misses while my friends who stayed in corporate were becoming managers and directors and doing big things. But thankfully, I learned to fix my perspective by fixing that belief that my expectations have to match the outcome I want or nothing else will do. I learned to see things as kind of an experiment. What would happen if I give my all to this venture and, you know, see what happened? 
And I get it. If making an income to pay your rent next month is the goal, you don't have time for experiments. But hopefully you see where I'm going with this line of thought. I believe that expectation is a double-edged sword. Yes, you should be expectant, have goals, walk towards them, but learn to do your best and then trust God with the outcome. So we're talking about what to do when you feel left behind in life. And that's number one, reframe your perspective. I hope that helps. Number two, make stuff. Make stuff and keep making stuff. What do I mean by this, make stuff? When you feel stuck, the best way to get unstuck that I have found is to keep moving. And the best way to keep moving is to focus on whatever your hand finds to do. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your heart. For in the realm of the dead, where you are going, there is neither working, nor planning, nor knowledge, nor wisdom. Guys, we are all going to die and leave this earth someday. I don't mean to be morbid, but this is not a dress rehearsal. This life is all we've got. And Solomon is saying, just go do something, please. If you've ever asked the question, what am I supposed to be doing with my life? Sure, I have a job and it pays the bills, but is that all? Sometimes these existential questions can drive you crazy, but I promise you don't have to overthink it. If you're committed to glorifying God with your life, just focus on the next thing that calls to your heart. Your question might be, then, well, how do I know? How do I know that this thing that calls to my heart, this thing that I want to do, is God's will? How do I know I'm in the middle of God's will? And to that, I say three things. Number one, is it legal? Let's get that out of the way. We don't commit crimes here, right? Number two, is it God honoring? Will it bless others and point back to God? Number three, do you like it? Do you have the skills to do it? Or at least are you able to learn what you need to do it? If it checks all three boxes, I say go ahead and do it. And trust that if God doesn't want you to be there, he will redirect you. But you must stay connected to him. I think a lot of times we overthink our next steps. And for good reason, right? We don't want to misstep. We want to be aligned and do the right thing. But in the process, we overthink ourselves out of every opportunity. This is one sure way to get unstuck when you feel left behind us in life. Make stuff. Do stuff. Build stuff. Organize stuff. Start that furniture reclaiming hobby thing you've always wanted to do. Start painting again. Write that article, that blog. Do the YouTube thing if you really want to do it. Start the business. Register the nonprofit. Volunteer. Go do the thing. I run a program where I walk women through pursuing their God ideas. And some of the big issues we talk about and try to tackle are overthinking and the fear of failure. It can be paralyzing. But you don't have to stay there. Take a bold step of faith, knowing full well that whatever step you want to take will surprise you. It will not be exactly what you expect. If it's better than you expect, hey, pleasant surprise. And if it doesn't measure up, no biggie. It's an experiment and there's something better on the horizon. So just keep it moving. I think there's something about creating and serving others that takes the focus off negative patterns of thought and helps you engage your skills and your purpose. Don't worry about getting things right the first time. Very few people ever do. I love this quote by Sean McKay. He says, everyone has to do many things before they figure out they are one thing. You have to try and do and pursue many things until you find out what you want to be known for. So what should you be focused on right now? Trying things, learning, experimenting, and making the best of whatever season of life you're in, no matter how hard it is. During that hard season of my life, I kept blogging. I started a business, <clears throat> organized workshops and other things. Most of them didn't really go anywhere, but the lessons I learned are still with me today. So let's do a quick recap. We've been talking about what to do when you feel left behind in life, right? So two points to note. Number one, reframe your perspective. You do this by separating your current perspective from your past experiences, and you also deeply examine your beliefs. Number two, make stuff. Try things. Don't be afraid to experiment. Fail, learn, and then grow. The more you do these things, the more alive and on purpose you will feel. So I want to ask you, what would you like to try? What's your next best thing? I'd love to hear your stories, your ideas. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Send me an email at thedriveninintrovert at shepark.com. You can check the description for more information and I'll see you next time.